Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So we have a few minutes, so, but welcome all. So good to see everyone here. <laughs> Wonderful. And so if the, if the moon of Ramadan has, has risen in your sky or, and or in your heart, then may this be a blessed month uh, for us. And this is a, a month of merciful goodness and abundant showering of abundance. So alhamdulillah, this is a month that begins uh, for some of us already, some of us tomorrow. Uh, this is going to be the, the moon of Ramadan that rises in the sky and in the, and in the heart. So, you know, we were, we were looking, at the, looking for, the, for the moon last night and uh, we have very, very clear skies in here in New Mexico. And, uh, but still, they say you could only see it if you had an optical aid and if you know exactly where you're looking. <laughs> so, but uh, I think tonight we'll probably see it. So it's, I like to also see the, the second night moon as well. It's going to, I think, very clear tomorrow, tonight, inshallah. So. Okay. So we'll try. Well, today we've got some more technological challenge. I'm going to try to play an audio clip at the end. And so we'll see if the audio clip is clear enough. It comes through. So. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So nine o'clock. Okay, inshallah, we can begin now. And this uh, slide here, let me just do that, okay. Uh, this slide here is, uh, you'll, you'll notice that, you might notice or remember that we've seen this terrain before. These are all the rivers and the lines of, of the path going to the water, the word for Sharia, the path to the water. And we looked at how these paths are all going directly to where they are supposed to go. And I've put superimposed on that this uh, Poincaré disc, which is an hyperbolic projective plane. And projective is very interesting. We've been using the word projective for the last two or three weeks. Uh, shadow plays are a projection. And when a shadow is made, that is a projection. And these projections are always one dimension less than the body that they are reflecting from or coming from. And so projection is a interesting way, a very helpful way for us to enter into the space that we cannot see. Now animals, uh, plants and minerals are able to see these things in, uh, in higher dimensions. But we are in a sense stuck in three dimensions. And Ibn Arabi says the jinn are stuck in two dimensions. So we have two dimensional jinn, we have three dimensional humans, and we have four and more dimensional minerals, plants, and animals. And this explains why minerals, plants, and animals know more than we do. And Ibn Arabi says about the verse in the Quran about don't let have your about the skins testifying against me, against us. Uh, he said, don't let your skin be more intelligent than you are. And so that's, uh, this is a question partly of what we can see and what we can't see. So if on this Poincaré disc, on this, this is of course Escher, uh, did a lot of uh, playing around with and working with this hyperbolic projection. So you see these tri triangular figures. Uh, in the middle, there's, there seems to be some kind of center point. And then there are these triangular figures uh, wrapping around. And they are what they call in mathematics conformal. So all of these figures are the same shape, but they're not isometric. They're not the same size, the same measure. And as you go towards the circumference, you see that these figures are getting more and more squished together, to use a technical term. And we'll think about, we're going to, this is going to, we'll end with this as well, I think. Squeezing and squishing. This is a very important concept here. So these figures squeeze and squish and get closer and closer to the circumference. Now, what happens with the circumference is that, um, let me put this down a little bit, the circumference, 
the imagery that, that Ibn Arabi gives us so often is the circle and the center point and the circumference. And so it seems to be, well, of course, we're looking at the creator as from, as, and the divine God as coming from the center and the circumference. And if you think about uh, this, if we look at the center point, that's called a, a dot or a point. And that point uh, is like the point which is in the letter N, the noon. And that point, if when you're looking above it, it is just a point. But when you look sideways, you can then see that it's actually a straight line or an alif. And then that alif, if it's put onto another larger dimension, it actually becomes a circle. And then that circle then comes out and becomes its own sphere. So this is one explanation of how the point and the circumference are the same place, are the same uh, source. So Ibn Arabi talks about the center and the circumference being haq, being the true. And then everything in between is khalq, is the creation, is us. And then at the circumference, there is a protective divine name, which is preventing these figures from leaving this finite realm. And this is so that who is with you wherever you are. So there's no place where you can be where who is not with you. And then, and who is around everything encompassing. So the muhit is this is exactly the word circumference, encompassing circumference. And it is a protective place which says this is the fence or this is the enclosure. Everything within are, is where the figures can be. And there is nothing outside that these figures can go to. And so then we have lesa warahu marma. There is nothing behind who to target. So this is also the imagery of the bow and arrow. Because the, the target, there is nothing, there is nothing to be targeted behind this circumference. So this circumference is the protective uh, uh, guard to keep us within a particular place. And the within where that place is, is this interval between the center and the circumference. So we are squeezed into a interval between the center point and the circumference. So that wherever we go, there is Allah, there is who, and that there is no place outside or behind who to target, to be shot at. <laughs> now this hyperbolic plane, it has these things called asymptotes, when, these, when the figures come closer and closer to the axis line. And so if we think about inverses and reciprocals, uh, we, now we want to think about this concept of reciprocation, this back and forth and doing this and doing that. Those are reciprocals. And if we look at these numbers, look at 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, 1 over infinity. So the one stays the same, and then the, it's, and then the inverse is two on the de denominator. So this bottom number, two, goes to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So as you know, that, so one half is bigger than one third, and one third is bigger than one quarter. So as these numbers on the bottom get larger and larger, the, the total becomes smaller and smaller. And so every number in the denominator is going to infinity. And then, because if you add up all of these numbers, one half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth, and you add them up infinitely, they will always stay within a finite range from zero to one. So an infinite number of numbers is squeezed into a finite range zero to one. And if we would like to look at ourselves as numbers and letters and beings, an infinite number of letters, numbers, and beings are squeezed into a finite range from the center point to the circumference. These are infinite because the, we are words of God. So when God says be, 
and we become, that means that this second person imperative makes a word, and that word is become, it is us. And so when we are told to be and we become, then, then, we, are, then we are words of God, the kalimat of Allah. We are words of God, and these words of God are never exhausted. So if all of the trees were pens and all of the oceans were ink, still the words of God would not be exhausted. So there is no end of these words of God, who we are, going from and placed in this disk from the center to the circumference. And although these words of God are infinite, they are squeezed into, we are squeezed into a range from zero to one, from nukta, the center, to the mohit, the circumference. And then this, the distances are very interesting. Now, let's look at, you see a little bowl down at the bottom here, a well, a, a, a hollowed out well, a bowl. And one of the images that Ibn Arabi uses is from Dhuna Nun, and it's this idea of, and these are six cases that Dhuna Nun mentions as being ones that, are, uh, that will destroy your intellect, which is a good thing. And this is part, Ibn Arabi says, of the outflow of the large volume to the small volume, without the large growing smaller or the small growing larger. And so I've looked at this for uh, many years and trying to visualize what it could be. How can this outflow of the large volume, so from the large volume, these figures keep flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. And they go into this smaller volume, but the large volume never decreases in size. It never gets smaller. And this, and this bowl that's receiving it never overflows or gets larger. And so... This is the process of everything coming from the single entity flowing into, I'm going to sneeze in a minute, flowing into this smaller cup or well. Uh, and this, and if when we look at this and the shadow play metaphor, the projection screen is between the single entity, which is bringing figures into this receptive bowl called the earth and called the vast earth. So if when you look at this bowl, you can see that, that if you're on the surface of the bowl, then you have, a, you have many different distances to cover to get to the center point. So a point in the, in the surface of the bowl has to go all the way this way to the center point. And some of them are muqarrabin, they're, they're the ones who are very close. They are close to the center. They have a short distance to get there. And the ones way out here towards the corner on the circumference, they have to go all the way down the surface and all the way along to get to the center. So their distances are varying. But if you think about a dot projecting light and touching each one of these figures, making each one of these shadow figures, that single dot is equidistance, is the same distance to every figure. So if you take a, if you take a ball and, you, and, you, and a sphere and you've got a, a dot inside, the path from the center of the sphere to each surface, interior surface of the sphere is the same distance. And this is why Ibn Arabi tells us that the distance from haq to khalq, from God to the creation, is not the same as a distance from the creation to God. So we are at different uh, distances to the divine, whereas God is of the same distance to all of us. And this is what's then called a Hausdorff dimension, if you want to get into that. So, this, so these reciprocals, let's go off for a little bit and look at this idea of reciprocals for a bit. And this is a, this is a passage that, I, I just came to a few days ago and it just kind of just stuck me in, in me and I wanted to just read this and read this and think about this. Uh, so I'll present it and you'll have to find out how it gets connected to everything else. But this is from chapter 424. 
And this is in the section of mutual meeting places. So on recognizing a mutual meeting place, I love for you to stay with me and you love to return to your spouse. So wait until I have recovered from my anger at you. And then at that moment, you can go on away from me. God exalted said, he will love them and they will love him. Thus, who is the lover and the beloved? Then he begins his, the, the first line of the poem. Whoever loves fana, annihilation, loves to meet me. Whoever loves to stay on, baka, permanence, loves to return, loves to return to the world. So Ibn Arabi then writes, now when I listen to this meeting place, his word, until I have recovered from my anger at you, this weighed heavily on me. Because my marifa, my recognition of the true in the state of this meeting place was little. So when he knew that he had distressed me like this, he consoled me with someone other than me having this experience. He made me learn his وسلم, word from God. Indeed, he is more intense in yearning for a meeting with his beloveds than they are for him. You see, who, the Allah, exalted, knows them more than they know who. Thus yearning is commensurate with knowledge. So the more you know who your beloved is, the more yearning you have for the beloved. This, despite my knowledge that matters like these, are actually languages of stations and states and their properties and properties of the divine name. This is the meaning of his word. On the day the God aware, the Muttaqin, will be gathered to the supremely compassionate as a delegation. Now, no one is gathered to him except the one who is not already by his side in the place of this particular name, the supremely compassionate, Ar-Rahman. But one is with him in the place of the property of another name other than this name. Therefore, if you recognize the true with something like this kind of marifa, what you hear from God, everything which is a quality of the creative being, will not weigh grievously on you. So this takes us back to how we are at various distances from the divine, and the divine is at equal distance to us. And then the question of what names are coming. So this mutual meeting place, which is the fourth, no, fifth, it's the fifth section of the Futuat al it is all of the chapters where there is a mutual meeting place where God says, I come down to see you in the sky of your world, especially in the third part of the night, so that I descend in the third part of the night and ask, is there anyone who needs something that I may give it to them? Is there anyone turning to me that I may turn to them? Is there anyone asking forgiveness that I might forgive them? And so this is, of course, the thinning of the veil. This process of the divine coming into the cherisher, coming into the sky of our sky of this world, is a thinning of the membrane. It's a stretching of the membrane and a, an approximation going on, a clear, a closing in going on. And then Ibn Arabi says, in this mutual meeting place, to meet God who comes down, descends to come to us we, you would expect, have to ascend to meet to that place. But no, we have to descend to meet that place. So this becomes a kind of an unusual geometry where God descends to a place, waits for us, and we descend to come to that place. The true comes down to the sky of your world and the creature goes down also by effacement and then they meet. And these rates of change are different. So now let's look at the Eiffel Tower, the Tour Eiffel. Look at the Eiffel Tower. And if you, this is also hyper, what's called a hyperbolical or, or stereographic projection. So back to projections. Now the route from, if you look at the, the Eiffel Tower that is, uh, that is distal, is over there in the distance, uh, you can see that you have to go from the top, you can go from the top of the tower down to the base, that's a descent. But the reciprocal, the reciprocating situation is one where you uh, would be from the top going down, down, down to meet the mutual meeting place. 
So this is how reciprocation works and inverses work. So the divine comes down to meet us at a certain place, and we come down to meet at a certain place. So in the hyperbolic projection and in the stereographic projection, we can see how it could be that one party comes down and the other party also comes down to meet in a certain place. Okay. Now this meeting place then is this thin barzakh, this thin membrane. And oops, I got that wrong. Barazikh. Okay, here I'm gonna the you know don't don't look at that. Okay, so the second word there, la the barazikh. Uh, I put the A instead of I. So these membranes are the most complete places for knowing the matters. And this is a place of the divine names. You see, they are a membrane between us and the one name. So the divine names are a membrane intermediate between us and the divine name that they name, the one that they name. Thus, they have a view towards who, given that they are names belonging to who, and they have a view towards us in the place where they provide in us the various effects and imprints and contributed to the divine name named. So this, in any kind of membrane, one ocean comes this way, the other ocean comes this way, and they don't cross. But this membrane has a face towards this ocean, and it has a face towards that ocean. So the divine names have a face towards us, and they have a face towards the one named. So if we want to see the one named, we look at the intermediary, and the intermediary then looks at the divine. Therefore, if you recognize the one name, the one that's being named, you recognize us. For example, if you recognize that you are living, then you recognize the name living, who has the effect of giving life. Okay. And we'll be, we also need to be having through all of this, this, uh, the body and earth. Can't go very far without that. That's what Ibn Arabi keeps showing us. So let me read this last part over here. That God bestows light blocking and coarseness as a sacred trust. So these veils, the veils that are our bodies, these veils which are our body, the earth which is the, 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 home for all of these shadows and the vast earth which is the giant projection screen of all of these uh, effusions from the divine from who these are a sacred trust and she covers over what she is encompassing this is why what is in her does not emerge visibly so what is in the heart does not come out so if there's a light in the heart, if the heart is illuminated by a light, it glows but does not pass beyond the barrier of the skin. So a person with a heart lit up will radiate and glow, but there will be no light visible outside the skin. And this is the imagery of the lampshade. So the, the Siraj and Munir, the illumined lampshade, that inside the lamp shade there's a light, and the shade glows by the light, but then does not actually show the light. And so it stays inside invisible. And there is no trustee. Now, Ibn Arabi is going to be using these words, Am Aman, Amin, Umma, Um, Ummi. So let's put, and they're all the same word. There is no trustee, I mean, like the light blocking bodies guarding the lights enfolded within them. So this idea of enfolded so that we are, we have a light inside which comes out and gives us being at every moment and it's enfolded and enveloped in us. And so that enveloping and enfolding and this light blocking veil is what keeps the light to be from emerging visibly. So God has alerted them to their sacred trust, their amana, by speaking of some of them in his word, and, I'm sorry, another, and in his word, this is the amin land, hadha baladi lamin, hadha baladi lamin, this is the peaceful or amin land. This is our body. So the surah is talking about our body. Our body is the peaceful land. And it's, this is why in the Ilahi we sing, my body is your paradise. My soul is your Holy Spirit.
He calls it Amin, and it is a land full of many retaining walls and fences and Turab, good earth, and clay and Liban, bands of land extending the fertile area, like inserts ex extending a garment. So you have a shirt and it's not long enough, you put an insert in there and you extend the garment. Its description is Amana. And the Amin is the cultivator of land. The Amin is the Ummi, who is coming directly from his mother, not writing, and is entrusted. So one of the descriptions of the Prophet ﷺ is that he is Ummi. And so this doesn't really mean, or only mean, that he's illiterate or doesn't write. It means that he is as he came from his mother. And so we want, we'll be looking at that uh, in in the next slide about coming directly from the mother. So however much the bodies are roiled and buckled, they are nearer to the root, which is circularity, because the first shape recepted to the first body and the first volume is the sphere. So now we have looked at this reciprocal, squeezing everything into it, that's infinite into an interval. We're looking at the actual receptiveness of these effusions of the tajaliyat, of the shining, brilliant radiances, is this earth, especially the vast earth, which is our body, which is the body, and that this body is circular, because the first, uh, the first shape which accepts this is the circle or the sphere. So now we have spheres and circles, earth. So earth is circle, is spherical, because it is the first shape which is receptive to these uh, divine effusions, these divine tajaliyat. Okay. Now, now we keep moving along. Now, though, these look a little bit too much like headphones, but anyway, that's my effort to show. Ibn Arabi has this, uh, as a figure, an illustration in the margin, which is uh, these two circles and a kind of a two lines or a cone between them. And uh, so circles, two black lines, something like that. Um, there are conventions that Ibn Arabi has to make such a simple, uh, uh, picture, stick picture, as in a way, uh, there's actually more things he's trying to explain to us, he's, but he's giving us the first beginning of this illustration. So we need to probably look at the idea that these two circles that he draws, uh, these two endpoints, are the same endpoint, it means the beginning and the end, and that between them is some kind of torus like that. But he's going to be using the idea of these two black lines are the uh, the high roads, the Najdain, the, the high roads, are the, and high roads are where you go in order to look over across, you see the valley and the next mountain. So the Najdain, when you are on the high road, you can look down into the valley and up into the next high road. So you want, when, if you are someone who, when you're hiking along, you like to stay up on the high part, this is part of the, this is the feeling of being on the high road. So well, Ibn Arabi is expecting us to have memorized the Quran, of course, and from here, let's read this, uh, this one translation. Did we not assign him two eyes, so two eyes, and a tongue and two lips? So the tongue single, two lips, two eyes and guided him to the two high roads. So we're getting the idea of single and double, or dual, or twos. But he did not attempt the ascent. What will convey to you what the ascent is? It is to free a slave and to provide food in a time of hunger, to an orphan near in kinship, or to the poor afflicted with misery. So we'll read this from Ibn Arabi. He's going to be using these, they'll be in our ear as we, as we hear him. You will learn what we are establishing here only if you are someone of two eyes, not a possessor of just one eye. If you halt to learn, you stand between the two high roads. So this is a position somewhere between the two high roads where you can look down on both of these roads. Seeing the end point of each path, 
So when you're at this high vantage point, you can see where each path is leading towards. You journey along the path of your ultimate felicity, which path was not preceded by wretchedness. Yes, she is a level, smooth, exemplary, cleared, no deception in her path and no crookedness and neither curve nor ruggedness. So these are, again, we're listening and hearing the Quran when he's speaking like this. But the other path, even if her end point is felicity, because uh, the end point of all is rahma, is the kind, merciful goodness for all. That's their end point. Yet in the path, there are tracks of deserts with no water and places of perdition and swift predators and dangerous snakes. The created being will not reach the path's end point until these terrors have been suffered. The two paths are neighboring, dispatched from a single ground and terminating at a single ground. The two are differentiable by what is between the two grounds, what is between the beginning and the end. Their image is in the margin as you see. And then he has his drawing of the, in the margin. So as we saw in the first uh, session that we, we started, I think um, we had the, 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 Mobius, the Mobius strip, the, the loop that has one surface. So when you have a circle, you put a notch on the circle. That notch is the beginning, but it's also now the end. And everything between it goes this way. So when you're on the circle, Ibn Arabi says, you make the beginning. And the circle is undifferentiable. It can't be, you can't find out where you are on the circle unless you put the mark there. When you put the mark there, that's the beginning. That is automatically the end. So who is the first and who is the last? And so Ibn Arabi says, when we look one direction, kind of backwards along the circle, the veil has been, dis has been taken off and we see what happened behind us. If we look forward, we see a niqab. We see the, the slit, uh, the veil with the slits for the eyes. So in the future, we only see the eyes and the slit and the rest is veiled. The past is unveiled. And so he then will tell us, the one on the cleared way witnesses all that is on the path of his friend, on that person on the other way. Here, the first one, you, he is sighted while his friend is blind. The blind one does not see the path of the sighted one. So it's very interesting. When Ibn Arabi talks about blindness, he, talks, he uses either the word see or sight. Sight means that the that you can't see physically, but a blind person can see what there is to know, and that's the word see. So I don't know if I kept consistent there because it's kind of hard to keep getting sighted in English. So the blind one does not see the path of the sighted one. Then lo, the sighted one suddenly feels fear because of what he is witnessing, these disasters which are along the path of the blind one. He sees the terrors, and he imagines in himself that if he were there, he could avoid being afflicted. But he sees it because he could dodge the obstacles. He, but he sees that the blind one has no information about any of this. He is there blind, so he sights nothing. So for now, the blind one is enjoying his course until he falls into a pit or one of the snakes bites him. Only at that moment does he experience pain. He cries out for help to his friend, and among his friends there is one who helps him, and among his friend there is one who has already gone on ahead, so he does not hear him. He is driven along inexorably as long as God wills. Then God is mercifully compassionate to him, then he becomes felicitous. So this Ibn, Ibn Arabi is giving us this image of companionship of your friend, your Sahaba, and, and companionship. Uh, he talks, he tells the one story about, um, yeah, someone is, uh, is, is to be executed. And his last word, his last desire before he's executed, he says, I want to meet with the king. And so the king allows him to meet. And, the, and he says, now what did you want to say to me uh, before we execute you? And he said, I just want to walk from one end of your palace to the other end of the palace. So they walk along from one end of the palace to the other. And at the end, they turn around and, and the king says, now, are you happy? Is that what you wanted? And the man says, see, now we have had companionship. 
and with this companionship, you will be unable to execute me. And the king says, you are right. How could I kill someone who is my companion? So this concept of companionship comes out throughout with Ibn Arabi. And uh, I'll just give one story, that, uh, an Aisha story, that about what it means to this, this image of the person, one person, you're on this on one path, and you're looking at the other person on the other path, and you can see what's going on there, what, and you have empathy. You feel, oh my goodness, what's going to happen to this person? So Aisha uh, hears that someone had died, and, um, and so uh, she then asked the Prophet Sallallahu asked her husband, um, what, where is this person now? And he says, he's in Jahannam, he's in the hellfire. And Aisha, you know, goes away, and for the whole day she's very quiet. Um, and then he asks her eventually, he says, what, what's happened with you? And she said, uh, what you've told me. Um, because isn't, wasn't he someone who uh, did help the poor? And didn't he uh, make peace among the larger family? And the Prophet ﷺ says, because of what you have said, because of what you have said, his way is easier now. So this is the, this is the, how we look at the others and we say, I wish it were better for this person. And we make prayer, dua. All of these things have the effect of making things better for the other person. And uh, we, I've had a request to talk about the, the question of evil. I don't think we'll be able to get into it this time, but let's, uh, we'll do we'll do one little part of that, uh, and that's this 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 circle. The, because what happens is that the that the circle begins with the Nur Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ends with the Nur Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It begins with the one who is going to guide, be the guide for all of us, and it ends with that same guide being the one who intercedes for all of us. So Ibn Arabi writes about it this way. Now then, from the moment Messenger of God وسلم, was sent, applied as a definition to everyone in the earth, the entirety of peoples, is mother community of Muhammad until the day of judgment. So the ones among them all who have faith in him will gather with him, and the ones other than those having faith in him will gather to him. It has been learned that he was sent only as merciful kindness to the worlds. It was not said to the mu'minun, the faithful alone. And it was told to him when he was cursing Ru'el and Zakwan and Usayya. And these are three people who were participated in murdering, ambushing and murdering 70 of the Ansar, seven of the people who had also memorized the Quran, treacherously murdered them. He had been cursing them during the prayer, and he was told when he was doing this, God did not send you to revile and curse, that is, to expel anyone, that is, do not expel the one I sent you to from my merciful kindness, even if, is he, if he is a disbelieving ingrate. No, I sent you as a merciful kindness. This is his word, I sent you only as a merciful kindness. And Ibn Arabi has one other uh, way of looking at this. Uh, he, has, he, he sees that God also uh, tells his messenger at this point that if you curse them, then when they come to me, I will only have your curse on them to deal with. But if you don't curse them, then they come to me neutral. I can then give them mercy and they can then turn to me. And if they turn to me, you will then be delighted and happy. So in order to be delighted and happy, uh, rather than reviling and cursing, you are to uh, send them to me as asking for mercy for them. Okay, so we'll, this is where we'll, I will try to get an audio clip to you at some point. But this is the, uh, the and this is one of the passages that uh, I think I hope that you'll see how everything begins to come together. But this is one of the passages that I came across recently, worked on recently, and again, it was one that just—it's one of those that just—did he really say that? What is he really saying? 
And here it is. And part of what is encompassed in this alighting place, now this is, now we're in section uh, <clears throat> four, I guess, of the Futatamakya. So one of the alighting places. And this one here is Surat al-A'la. So from this, in this Surat al-A'la, if you read very carefully and you have opened up for you the verses, you will find this. Ibn Arabi is saying that each of these chapters that he works on here are maps. And these are maps that explore this chapter, the surah of Quran. And then as you're exploring this fenced-in enclosure of Quran, you are finding different things to discover. So and part of what is encompassed in this delighting place, surah al-a'la, is the fact that God has placed in you, the human being, a knowing of everything. So here we go. What? <laughs> The fact that God has placed in you, the human being, a knowing of everything. And Ibn Abi is quite serious here. A knowing of everything. And I think, how are we getting this knowing of everything? But then he intervenes between you and your perception of what is on your side. That is what God placed there. So God places in, on my side a knowing of everything. A knowing of everything. It's placed. It's some kind of here's everything, here's the knowing of everything, and it's placed here. But God intervenes between that place, that placement and me, so I can't perceive it. But the human being is not singled out with this alone, so it's, I'm not the only person with this issue. No, the universe, all of him, is this way. It is part of the divine secrets, which the intellect denies and declares impossible altogether. So the intellect cannot accept or believe or or declare possible that all knowledge could be placed in me at every moment. The proximity of the divine secrets to the selves of the ignorant or the unaware at the moment of their knowing is the proximity of the true to his slave. So we've got back to proximates and proximal and distal. And it is his exalted word, and we are closer to him than you are, but you do not see. So at the, on the deathbed, when the membrane is thinner and thinner and thinner, we are closer to him than you are, but you do not see. And it is his word, and we are closer to him than the jugular vein. But despite this close proximity, he is not perceived and he is not recognized. In fact, Ibn Abi will tell us at one point that when, when God is on the throne at the circumference, that's the farthest, the cosmic throne, that's the farthest, farthest place that anything could be. And when God is at the center, that is the closest, closest, closest place that anything can be. And both great distance and great proximity are both veils which prevent us from seeing. But despite this close proximity, he is not perceived and he is not recognized except by taqlid. And here taqlid is from the muqallid, the necklace. So you put a necklace around you and this necklace stays close to you. That is following these verses from the revelation, the surah al-A'la, as if the verse were tied to you like a necklace. And if not for his reporting so, the intellect would not point to it as evidence. So the intellect only accepts this because that's what the Quran says. Otherwise, the intellect says, cannot be. This is the way it is for all the known things which he teaches, which do not end. So all the known things which he teaches, which do not end, they are all of them in the human being and in the universe with this vantage point position of close proximity. And you do not know what is in you until you are given a kashf, disclosing them with vessels of the nows. <laughs> so, vessels of the now. All the, th the things that are known have no end. The words of God are never exhausted. These figures on the Poincaré disc uh, go towards the circumference and get squished in and squished in and remain inside the interval from the center to the circumference. And in, you need to be given, and we need to be given a kashf, a disclosure of the vessels of the nows. In fact, okay, it is not sound for there to be a kashf in a single gulp. So this 
knowledge that has been placed, the knowledge of everything which is placed at every moment with every tajalli, with every shining radiance which is placed in here, which God intervenes between me and seeing it, you cannot drink it in a single gulp because fencing restriction is involved. In fact, we said that this does not end. So it is not learned except one thing after another until no end. One thing after another until no end. This is one of the strangest, most wondrous of the divine secrets that he inserts into the being of the slave what does not end. Just as inserted in the, not, in the knowing of the true is what does not end. That is all the known things. And his knowing is exactly his that, his essence. So this receptiveness to that knowledge of all things. And we, our first uh, direction here is that the messenger of God وسلم, was given six things that none of the other messengers were given. One of them is the knowledge of the firsts and the lasts, the plural first and the plural last. And so the knowledge of everything that came before, everything that will come after, and then that, so everything that comes before everything that becomes after is in the present, which is a vessel called now. So the vessel of now holds everything that has come before and will come later in this vessel called now. And so these, this knowledge, this knowledge of everything is coming at one after the other, one after the other, one after another. So you look for the newest ones, the new one. What's coming new? What's the newest placement of this knowledge of everything? And the messenger of God, وسلم, when it would rain, used to go out and open his shirt and, and let the rain come directly to his chest. The word chest here is sadr, which means center and chest and confronting. So the first thing that you see is, your, is someone's chest. So when you come up to someone, if you're confronting them chest to chest, the first thing is the chest. So the first place where this all knowledge is, comes to is the chest. And of course, rain is metaphorically knowledge because rain comes down to the earth that's dry and gives her life. And knowledge comes down to my body, which is dry and dead, and gives me life. And so he would open his shirt, receive the rain, and asked about this. He said, because it is fresh or new from its cherisher. It's new and fresh. It's the first thing that's coming. So you receive it to your chest, which is the first thing to receive. And so this taking the knowledge of everything, receiving it freshly, is taking it as if from the mother. So Ummi coming from his mother, directly from the mother. So coming out and the knowledge that you have when you come out and you turn back and look at mother and mother earth, you gain knowledge there, which is fresh and new. And so it's not something that you take for years and years to study. So the Prophet Sallallahu his knowledge is not something that takes years and years to acquire and study. And then the other, uh, the parallel theme is when Prophet Jesus is in the crib, in the cradle, and speaks out and speaks new. And so this new speech is not something that was learned for many, many years or studied. It came out new when he turned and loved and defended his mother. This concept of the infinite words and names all being encompassed and enclosed and squeezed into uh, a, an interval is uh, the person who protects and guards and preserves and memorizes the Quran has between the two shoulder blades, that is an interval, has between this interval the nabuat, the, the state of prophecy, without giving a law. State of prophecy without giving a law is contained. So the body contains between the two shoulder blades this prophecy, which is being able to speak directly from the divine, 
through, and we have it mostly through the true dream right now, enclosed, encompassed, and preserved as a hafiz of Quran, preserved in this body. And the word for has in the, in this in the hadith has this the person who has memorized Quran has uh, istadraj as 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 from B R J in the tenth form of uh, taking this into the body. Uh, it, the semantic definition of it is when the a camel has just given birth to her child. And then as she walks along, she is pulling along or drawing towards her, her child. So giving birth, starting to move on, and the child is drawn to stay close by and keep going with the mother. So this process of giving birth and being drawn by the mother to be able to enclose and encompass and preserve, that's what we're looking at here. And if you look down at the bottom of this of these waves, you have the beginning of the audio clip and the end of the audio clip squeezed into a small area. And on the top one, you have very much opened out. And so, and I, I wish we could do that. I don't know if we can do it later. Be able to listen to this clip and watch the two uh, wave tracks move along. So on the bottom here, everything has been squished between two shoulder blades, as it were. And on the top, we see the detail. And this detail is where everything is going, what everything is. Um, and so it's not the same as the bottom line. The bottom line say, oh, here's the whole lump. Uh, we're looking at the details. And this is called, uh, in Arabic, it's, it, well, it's called the tafsil and fasl khitab, that the address is coming out particularly to you. So the Quran addresses you particularly, not as a, not as a lump sum, but as a particular address to you. So in this clip, uh, look for around eight minutes, 56 seconds is the part I wanted to show. And uh, in the Quran, we have hatta na'alam until we know. And Ibn Arabi tells us that, when, that this is not the royal we. There is no royal we in the Quran. When there is we, it means the divine names. So this is the divine names, which are the barzakh or membrane between us and the source. And they face us and they face the source. And we see their effect on us. And so we know by the effects on us that these are these names and they're having these effects. So uh, the clip is about four minutes, and uh, I, I, as with all music, I don't know, some people will not like it, but it's, it, you will still be able to see uh, or hear what we're trying to get at here. Um, this is the, the concept then of, of receptivity to all, and then seeing each and, and hearing all of these, these individual moments, these nows. And this, uh, because Ibn Arabi tells us that always first is hearing and sight comes later. First is hearing. The first thing that happens to us is we hear the imperative be and we are. So be, kun, is the first thing that's heard. And so the, we, we hear this be and we are. And then after we hear this, we sight and see the cherisher saying, am I not your cherisher? And we see this vision, and no one doubts that this is our cherisher. And then for a few months, we are in the womb. In a, we enter into a clay body that's inside the womb. And in that clay body, we join that clay body at four or five months. We are there for a few months, and we hear. So we can hear when we're there, but we don't see. Then we come through that ch the, the channel. We turn back, and we see. Am I not your mother? Am I not am I not your cherisher? And we say, yes, you are. And then we are in a grave, which is also a womb of pressure for us. And in the grave, audit, audition is going on. So we are asked questions and we give testimonies. And, but we don't, there's nothing to see, there's only to hear. And then at some moment we are uh, exited, we go through uh, uh, the channel and we see the guide and the guide reaches out the right hand and says, 
am I not your guide? And he said, you are our guide and take me where I need to go. And so uh, we, we want to come from, as we come from the mother, fresh, the rain fresh onto the chest, uh, the speech fresh from birth, uh, looking back towards the mother, the first speech then is that, that Jesus gives is the one that is defending uh, his mother. And so, you know, may our uh, speech be one that is loving and defending Mother Mary and Mother Earth. And uh, let's go ahead and I'll try to get this sound going right now. Just a second. Okay. <laughs> So, well, I mean, this, for me, that's the one when, when Sheikh Afarias talks about showering of abundance. This is the showering of abundance, and it just keeps coming and coming. And this is the drenching in the rain. And the removal of the shirt is to take off the veils, off the protective veils, so that there can be nothing intervening. And then and Ibn Arabi keeps telling us one after the other, one after the other. It's not a lump sum. It's one after the other, one after the other. So, alhamdulillah, Rabbul Alameen. So, Thank you very much. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay. Shweb? Yes. Uh, you, you said that the only way to know uh, where you started on the Mobius strip was to mark it. And mm -hmm. then said that's the beginning point and the end point. And right. then said that the who was the beginning and the end. Does that mean that who is the mark? Uh, so the, the, the who is, is ready to be the first, the last, the inward, the outward, the, the visible, the invisible. And so the only, so with, with, with God, everything is one. There's one entity. And there is no uh, distinguishing anything in the one until the human being comes along and then makes a mark. And when the human being makes a mark, suddenly what was a single loop now becomes a circle which has a mark for the beginning and the end, and then the twist gives it the inside and the outside. And so, uh, and so all things that come from the throne come down as one, and then they come to the footstool, and they come into the do and the do not. And so that's where polarity comes from, that, and that's where music comes from. And that's where the, the see, the, the thing about these sound waves that we were looking at, they have vertical height, and they also have horizontal measure as well. So vertical, horizontal, and so uh, we are looking at, at poles, that things go up and down, and they go back and forth. And so waves then becomes, uh, are, you can't have a singular wave. Uh, a wave requires uh, opposites, up and downs, back and forths. 
And so all of the things that we are encounter, we encounter them as polarity, as, as up and down. And the only, the issue is that we, we like certain things and we don't like other, we don't, we like some dips of the waves and we like, uh, and we don't like other ones, but the, the dips and the ups and the downs of the waves and the crests and the nose and all of those things are what make the creation. And so as soon as we are able to open our shirts to receive that rain, uh, we're able to perceive the way things really are. Uh, I? Oh. Yes, yes. Yeah, so uh, Shai, you can you tell us again the distance between the center and circumference? How from the center to the circumference to who to us, from who to us is always the same, whereas the opposite is not. Can you can you go through that again, please? Yeah. So uh, when we're when we're looking at the at the one disc sending all of the figures into the smaller one and not getting the larger not getting smaller and the smaller not getting larger um, the all of these figures have to be in different places in this in this well in this cup and it's interesting that these figures then uh, are have to be earth-based because if they're not earth-based if they're fire-based or light-based then they are they don't make a reflection in this well. So the angels and the jinn don't make a reflection in the well, so they are not visible to us. And so uh, having the body allows the, the shadow to be made. And so these shadows then are distributed all along this well, and, and they can be distributed and, and contained uh, until beyond inf to infinity, <laughs> right? And so but their placement. So if I'm on the well and I'm on the on here, I have to go down the well and along to get to the center. Or if I'm over here, I have to go all the way up into the to well to get to the circumference. So I either approach God distally or proximally, either by getting near or by getting farther, and both get me to where they, I want to go. And but when you look at the sphere and the projection is happening inside the sphere into the interior surface of that sphere then this, this, by definition, the center point of the sphere is equal distance with radii, with radiuses, going out to the interior of the, of the sphere. Just the way in a circle, the center is, by definition, equal distance to, all of, to the, every spot on the circumference. But when the moment you, you take that flat circle and make it a well, you begin to now see what Ibn Arabi is saying, that that this is that from our pers perspective on the surface of this well, we have different paths and we have different distances to go. Um, and so, but whatever paths we're on and whatever distances we're on, the the our actual distance to the divine from the divine perspective is equal. Thanks. Salam alaikum. Thank you. And um, question, you said God descends and person descends to meet, right? right? But we always, I always think of an ascension, like a mirage. And now I have to think a descend. How, I, how okay. do I do that? Well, yeah, this, Ibn Arabi looks at this, but partly this, this geometry that he's talking about comes with the, the prophet's mirage and the Isra. And what he keeps telling us about the, the prophet's ascension, uh, because he is the perfect slave. He is the perfect receptor, receptor of the divine. And so when the prophet, so the, the Quran very clearly tells us that, that we made our prophet, we made him our slave, to ascend. So made to ascend is not the same as ascending. So being made to ascend, and that's why he has the uh, burak who carries him. So because he's a slave who cannot ascend. The slave, the, the one who is perfectly receptive, the earth, earth can, does not ascend. Because if the earth becomes mountainous, that becomes very pride and proud, and, and oh, the top is so wonderful. So the earth doesn't become mountainous. The earth stays low so that, that she is always receptive. And so this, uh, the ascension is made to ascend. 
And these mutual meeting points are ones where the divine descends and we descend. And the reason that we descend is because for us to rise, we become more humble and more low. So that so our lowest position is our greatest position. And so to to meet God, we go low. We don't go high. I guess or I hope that's not the political jargon. But we go. We become humble to meet God. And so that's why we had that verse from the Quran. There, the verse is from the Quran that uh, you we free the slave, feed the orphan, and take care of the afflicted, the poor with their afflictions. And that process of khidmat or of service lowers us. And by lowering us, we then enter into the meeting place where God lowers himself. And so Ibn Arabi is, of course, fascinated by how does the divine condescend or descend to our level. And then it's amazing that the divine would descend to our level and then how do we get to that level? It's by another descent. And so we then reciprocate, we reciprocate the dissensions. And so in that geography, in that geometry, the going down and the shadow going down also, that's how they two meet. That's not how we so there's a question from uh, our sister Saima Alvi. Can you read it below? Uh, Okay, here we go. Yes, good. Thank you. Thank you, Habiba, for being here. Uh, can you please clarify what the two paths are that verses of Quran you refer to? These two paths, what does the steep path ask us to ascend? Now, so Ibn Arabi, is, these, all of this gets very, uh, very multi-layered, but the two paths in general, so when he tells the, ones, the story of the two paths, he's talking about one person sees things and they can look down at this other path and when they see this other path they see oh my goodness the person is going to enter into problems because they don't see they don't know what's happening and so uh so both paths the path uh to the garden and the path to the hellfire the two sisters jannat and jahannam will end have started from the same place and will end in the same place so this the the path idea is circular so we begin from the mercy of the nur muhammad and we end with the intercession of the mercy of nur muhammad and so all beings come from good merciful kindness and end in good, merciful uh, kindness. And the two paths, uh, the, the, the one path is a path that is one that tends to tends towards the garden. But see, Ibn Arabi says that because the prophet told us some information here, that's it, that the person uh, who is in the womb, the person is known to be someone who is going to the garden or to the jahannam. And then he also says that the person of the garden lives a life like the people of the fire until the last moment when he suddenly uh, becomes a person of the, acts like a person of the garden, dies and goes to the garden. And the other person acts like a person of the garden all his life until the last moment he acts like a person of the fire, dies and goes to the fire. So for us from our perspective we don't we don't see these two roads we can't we because we see behaviors which don't tell us which road the person is on so this high road then is the one that looks across the valley and sees the road we're on and the road someone else is on and so being able to have that vantage point and this is uh sharif or sharf uh, noble or vantage point. It's to be in a place like a scout watching who's coming through the valley. And so the high road is the to ascend to this high road so that you can see what is happening. What And the way to ascend to this high road is to free the slave, feed the orphan, and take care of the poor who are afflicted. So, alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum. Can I ask a question? Oh yes, alaikum salam. That's no alam. Finally, I made it. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. So the question I have is, you know, you mentioned about the istibraj, the divine flashes. Hatta alam. My Quran speaks to us directly. How do you start that divine flashes uh, um, actually reach to you so that you receive the knowledge? The one you mentioned, I. Yeah, can you repeat that little bit and clarify? You know, this, uh, this 
preserving uh, the Quran between the shoulder blades and then the hatta na'alam until we know. And this and the, the clause before that is we will try you until we know. And so we will try you until we know is that we, the divine names, will place you places, put you on paths with obstacles, and will watch how you navigate this course. And how you navigate the course will tell us what we need to know. And so we need to know how you will navigate the course. And navigating the course is Sharia, which means the path to the water, which means back to free the slave, uh, feed the orphan, and take care of the poor. And so that, that, is the, that is the course that we are tried with. What do we do with what we have? And what do we do with uh, how, we, how we treat other people? That is the trial that tells the divine names what we need to know. And then, this, uh, and then bringing this, this and then prophecy, being able to have the ilham, this inspiration in, of, of, of the divine inside of us, requires a, a protective a protective body and the protective body is the earth body which is and so we it requires us to love and protect our mother so the the, the model then here is uh the example of isa alayhi salam of jesus uh, speaking from the cradle and so that speech from the cradle the first the words that come out are to protect the mother and so as an ummi, as someone who comes straight from one's mother, we want to be, our first act is to learn from our mother. We had that beautiful passage that how strange we are that we have not given a fair due to our mother. Um, and because the, the, the Arafin, the mystics, they, they leave the channel, they look back and they see their mother and they learn from their mother. And so we have learning from the mother, which is, which is the respect and honor of, of the body. And then we have um, the thinning of the veil, the removing of the shirt so that the rain can pummel the chest. And this drenching in the rain uh, with thin membranes and removing the fabrics that are preventing that from being seen and being received. Uh, that these are, that's our process for, for what, we, what we want to be doing. So the process of being tried by seeing how we work through the obstacles, how we take care of each other, how we honor the body, and then the uh, receptivity through uh, openness to what is coming to us at every moment. And so this every moment is hua kulash, kulash, uh, yoma hua fishan. Every day the hu is in a radiant brilliance. And day here is the smallest quantum of time. And so that really brilliant uh, radiance that's coming to us at every quantum, smallest quantum of time is coming to us with absolutely complete knowledge. And so we want the new ones that are always coming and we want to then, how do we go and look and begin to take that huge drenching of music and then be able to look through closer and closer and closer until we see the individual waves and we see how far apart they are. That's I think amp frequency or whatever and how high apart they are, that's amplitude. So the more we dive into that and we then begin to realize that what is most important is the smallest and the most detailed thing that we do. And this is back to the widow's might, that the widow gives a tiny coin and that tiny coin is more valuable than anything else that anyone has ever given. And that's also that what we see in this world is a projection of what's, what's built for us in the other world. And, what's, and so it might be tiny here, but it's great there. And so that tells us that this particular body that I am in is, is made there for a reason. And it, the, this is the most perfect, complete universe. And therefore you are completely, absolutely necessary. And that the detail, the smallest thing that you do has whatever huge consequences. And so we focus on, can we look at one of those waves and hear one of those pieces of music? Um, 
And this is different from if I come to the piano and I put my hand on the piano and push down every note of the piano, I have just played every great song in the world. But, you know, brunk, every note is there, right? But it's, as Roland keeps telling me, it's the silence in between the notes that really count. <laughs> So there are more, two more questions, and I think the time is, has been passing very quickly. Yeah, so yeah, just do more, let's hear the two, yeah, and we'll take it from there. Someone, someone had a question, or go ahead. It, it's written below in the, in the notes. Um, Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, here we go. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I just, just saw that now. Right, so uh, the where do we alight, where, the places that we alight in these different surah, the suar, and the surah uh, is a fenced-in area of Quran, and Ibn Arabi's chapters on these uh, fenced-in areas is a map that tells us, if you go here, you'll find this, if you go here, you'll find that. And so, uh, but, it, and Surat al-A'la is short enough that I would suggest that we all go back into it, read each verse until we find out which is the verse that Ibn Arabi is telling us, that when we find it, we will find that all knowledge is given to us at every moment. I'm still looking, but you, please, everyone, let's get started uh -huh. with that. <laughs> and so I just for you to catch it. Yeah, creation, and, and, the, and so the creation, uh, so what we said is that, that the verse that, that who is every day in a radiant brilliance, Ibn Arabi says that this is the smallest day. The largest days are 50,000 years, or the a year of the Lord is 1,000 years, and there are days which are 24 hours when the sun goes, hits the same place on the horizon. And then there are the tiniest days, the, the, a quantum day, and a broke, an indivisible day, and that's the shortest time. And if you think about, uh, let's say we have 24 candles that will be lit up in one day. Then every candle, candle one is lit up in one hour, the second hour, the second candle is lit till the 24th candle is lit, and that's all the candles are lit, and that makes one day. So the candles that are being lit are in, in the creation are 10 to the 50 or some number like that. So some outrageously huge number of candles are being lit up, uh, beings are being lit up at every moment. And each one is lit up individually. So you are at that moment, you are the sole focus of the divine and you are lit up. And then the next one is lit up. And then another one is lit up one by one by one. And then by the end of the day, which is the smallest quantum time period, like uh, Planck's second, uh, the smallest interval possible, that is the day when everything is lit up and then the next moment, everything is off again, the candles went out. And then each one is being lit up once again. So creation is the new creation, the Khalq al-Jadid, the new creation. Everyone is being created at every moment, one after the other after the other, one by one by one. So there's no lump piece of music. It's one by one by one by one by one. So alhamdulillah. Okay, thank you. And Ramadan Karim for everyone in Mubarakas. Okay, that. All right, so the, we, have, we have some, oh, this is Jose, give me some terminological issues. Okay, so Naima is off to take care of her grandchild. See, that's when she is going to find what she needs to find, the way Moses goes and finds the burning bush because he was looking for fire for the, the tribe. And Hajar finds uh, Zamzam looking for water for her child. So the, the that and wujud, uh, maybe we should look at that later, Jose. So let's maybe try that another time. So alhamdulillah, it's been a long time, as Habiba has mentioned to us. Uh, thank you so very much for being here. It's wonderful. I look forward to this all week. It's so, it's such, gives, gives me so much uh, inspiration. So thank you, alhamdulillah,